please take a second to subscribe, then like and share afterwards. We can really use your support. Thank you. CERN, the European Organization for Nuclear Research, an intergovernmental organization that operates the largest particle physics laboratory in the world. It is based in a northwestern suburb of Geneva on the France-Switzerland border. 175 meters directly beneath the ground runs the circumnavigating pathway of the Large Hadron Collider, or LHC, running a few miles in circumference that accelerates energy particles, ions, and hydrogen ions. Scientifically, the purpose of the collider is to experiment with particle physics, according to the official record. But interestingly, they admit that they are trying to create the conditions in pre-Big Bang cosmology to mimic how the Big Bang occurred. That's right. The godless scientific community rejects God's creation of the universe as it is told to us in Genesis 1.1 so it is trying to create a natural explanation for the emergence of our universe and the existence of space, time, and matter. Much of the world buys this nonsense, of course, but creating a false narrative of the emergence of the universe is just part of what is truly going on at CERN. Now, besides what is deep below the ground, CERN headquarters is just a stone's throw from the French border. Immediately across this border is the small community of Saint Genus Poilly, now at the center of CERN activity. This town is likely the very reason why CERN was built on this very spot. The area dates back to the Roman times and it is widely believed that an ancient temple once stood here dedicated to Apollyon, the destroyer. Apollyon is the Greek for the Hebrew Abaddon, meaning destruction. Apollyon appears in the Bible as both a place of destruction and an angel of the abyss. The Hebrew Bible references Abaddon as the angel of the bottomless pit, often appearing alongside the place called Sheol, the resting place of the dead that we call hell. Revelation 9:11. They have a king ruling over them, who is the angel in charge of the abyss. His name is Abaddon. In Greek, the name is Apollyon. The town's name of Poilly comes from the Latin Apolliacum, deriving from the Greek Apollyon. In Hindu tradition, one of the principal deities is Shiva believed to be the very same god Apollyon. What is Shiva also known as? The Destroyer. Hindu tradition states that Shiva expands and transforms the universe. Sound familiar? This is a direct connection to CERN's search for the secrets of the universe. And it is no wonder that within the building complex of CERN in Geneva is a large statue of Shiva. There have been very bizarre and occultic activity surrounding CERN and the Shiva statue. First, we see that CERN has a connection to the Gothard base tunnel and its opening ceremony which we covered back in episode 2, Secret Societies. This ceremony was live streamed to the entire world in 2016, calling for the world's religions to unite and conduct an interfaith blessing on the tunnel. Similarly, CERN produced an extremely bizarre video called Symmetry, an operatic sci-fi performance described as a dance to the cosmos that eerily resembles possessed people reaching out to a dark evil entity, performing a ritual around a seance circle, calling upon entities into our reality. We then see a number of figures that are falling through a wormhole towards the CERN collider like falling angels. It just becomes more clear what the LHC is attempting to resurrect. 
and it may well be the emergence of the entities that are to come out of the bottomless pit in Revelation 9. What is more sinister and dark is a ritual caught on tape on the CERN grounds directly in front of the Shiva statue that shows hooded people conducting a ritual with a young blonde girl appearing to be the center of a sacrificial offering. It was plastered all over the internet days later, and the media were quick to call it a hoax. But it should be said that this area of the compound is off limits to outsiders, especially after hours in the dark of night. The rituals and occultic ceremonies that venerate evil entities are clearly making CERN a major concern for what it is attempting to do. It appears to be opening some type of stargate. Sergio Bertolucci, who was the director of research at CERN, was asked about this extra-dimensional doorway, and Sergio did not hesitate in his response that out of this door, that something may come through. Yes, indeed, there may just be. And so far, the stargate or doorway hasn't been opened yet that we know of, but insiders have been on record to tell us of something almost equally as frightening. Through the use of sending through data, there has been responses coming back through that data. That's right, they're saying that they're sending information through to another dimension and there are intelligent responses to these signals. One of these scientists went on to echo what Bertolucci had said, and that is that they may soon be able to reach through the other side and bring back whatever that intelligence is, even though they have no idea what it is. Well, we can tell you what the intelligence is, and it isn't friendly because Abaddon isn't called the Destroyer for nothing. Because once it and the other entities enter with it, enter our realm, it would bring hell on earth. This lines up with Revelation 9 and the time of the tribulation when the Antichrist is given full reign to bring its oppression on the world after the saints have been removed from the earth. Given all of this information, is it possible that CERN will have something to do with the opening of the bottomless pit as described in biblical prophecy? The beast which you saw once was, now is not, and yet will rise out of the abyss, or the bottomless pit. Revelation 17.8 As we saw in the previous presentation in Episode 8, The Unholy Trinity, we explored the identity of the beast and how he has to be resurrected from the dead in Sheol, or the bottomless pit, to make his return to fulfill the prophecy of the Antichrist in the seven-year tribulation. We can see now that this is a very possible way for that to happen. Revelation 11.7 Now when they have finished their testimony, the beast that rises up from the abyss will attack them and overpower and kill them. This couldn't make it any more clear than that. The person who is the beast or the Antichrist will be coming from hell. And for Lucifer to ensure it happens, he uses the people and institutions under his influence to get it done. He had to wait for nearly 2,000 years for mankind to develop the technology in order to mimic that only God can do to bring someone back. The enemy has been slowly programming the masses to accept the idea of other dimensions and the crossing over of beings from one dimension to another. We've been seeing this all over on the movie screens recently. The highest grossing films today feature multiverses and portals, making such a phenomena seem normal and acceptable. Even toys that are directed to our children today are doing the very same thing to condition the minds. The most popular show streaming today, called Stranger Things, is about creatures from a dark, hellish dimension crossing over into our world through portals that are opened 
by scientific facilities like CERN. Is it just a coincidence that in the past several years that the entertainment world has been creating content that all surrounds around multi-dimensions and multi-dimensional beings? If we're gonna be honest, the answer is no. It is not a coincidence. Now, we need to shift gears to what is very closely tied to the Antichrist rising from the Abyss. And it comes to us in Revelation 8 in what is called the Wormwood Prophecy. The third angel blew his trumpet, and a great star fell from heaven, blazing like a torch. The name of the star is Wormwood. It goes on to say that many died from the water because it was made bitter. It is believed that this star is part of the second angel sounding the trumpet in verse 8. And as it were, a great mountain burning with fire was cast into the sea, and the third part of the sea became blood. Experts suggest that both the Wormwood Star and the Great Mountain were part of one very large asteroid that breaks apart either as it enters our atmosphere or shortly beforehand when an attempt to destroy it by a weapon from Earth. Thomas Horn, lecturer and best-selling author, reveals one major prophecy when given a vision and revelation of the asteroid, states what he saw in the vision of Earth's future. He experienced it as though he were present when the asteroid hits the Earth as it violently shakes and a tsunami wipes out the coastlines. He then witnesses the second asteroid hit the Earth, which later darkens the entire sky. He was then given the name Apophis in this revelation. Apophis is the Egyptian god of chaos, but what is more frightening is that in 2004 it was revealed that an asteroid with a diameter of 370 meters was observed to be on a collision course with Earth. This is roughly the length of four football fields. They called it 99942 Apophis. The probability given for an impact was 2.7% and the date would be on Friday, April the 13th, 2029. However, insiders at NASA and other expert astronomers reveal that the likelihood is far greater for that very date. At 20 million metric tons traveling at 28,000 miles per hour, it would equate to 65,000 atomic bombs going off at once. The good news, however, is that God's church is not appointed to experience the wrath that is to come. That is, we will be long gone by the time this event occurs. However, the event does precede the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Luke 21:28. And when these things begin to come to pass, look up and lift up your heads, for your redemption draweth nigh. This calls for us to take the opportunity while we still have it. The Apostle Paul said, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Romans 1.16 For this is the power of God that can convert from the Jew to the Gentile to bring man down to their knees to repent and call upon Christ as the only way of salvation and to bring the mercy of God to avert his judgment on the wicked. The book of Joel in chapter 2 paints us an eerily similar picture of doom and destruction like what an asteroid could cause. Yet it also tells us that if we call upon the name of the Lord we shall be delivered, and destruction will not come. One famed astronomer examining the path of Apophis states that there is a chance that it will pass through what he calls a window between Mars and Earth, where it will be hurled onto a different course that would make its return to Earth again precisely seven years later. Therefore, we have two possible collision dates, 2029 and 2036. 
and it will all depend on the people on earth and whether they will turn to Christ or continue to live in blindness to the truth. Because by 2025, they will be able to see Apophis racing towards the earth through a telescope. Then, through the naked eye, by 2027. This alone should be enough to convince those that this is not something that is easy to shrug off. Up next, a cultural and intellectual movement that believes that it can and should improve the human condition through the use of advanced technologies. It is a force on our doorstep that is promised to soon erase everything that it means to be human. The godless approach to immortality through the mechanism they call transhumanism. Here on Mysteries Uncovered. <laughs>